grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Father, source of learning, we give you thanks this day. We give you thanks for Heathwood Hall Episcopal School. We give you thanks for the teachers and staff, for its leaders and all those who love it. And we give you thanks most especially for the class of 2023. You have bestowed upon them gifts of mind and spirit. You have led them into truth as promised by your son. Now this day we pray that you would go before them to clear their path into the world. That you would go with them that they may abide forever in your truth, that you would follow behind them, guarding them and keeping them and sustaining them in their path. Let your holy wind blow through us this day. With your spirit, now imbue us and bring us at last to that vision which surpasses all human understanding and knowledge, that love that exceeds all we can ask or imagine, that peace which is ours forever in Jesus Christ, your Son. In his name we pray. Amen. Good morning. And on behalf of the faculty, staff, administration, and the Board of Trustees, we are honored to welcome you to Heathwood Hall's 47th Upper School Commencement Ceremony. I'm Chris Inchy, the head of school, and we are excited to both celebrate the members of the class of 2023 and recognize their graduation from Heathwood Hall. While many years and what seems like a lifetime of hard work and exciting adventures have brought us to this special day. Bringing this many people together requires hours of planning, hundreds of decisions, and a great deal of work. I'm especially grateful to Jenny Holder for her organizational leadership of a small <coughs> army of people that greeted you this morning to help design and construct this significant moment and important celebration. Thank you, Jenny. We are also guests of the Trinity Episcopal Cathedral. And I want to thank the Dean, the Right Reverend Dane Boston, and his staff for hosting us this morning. Further, I want to welcome the Bishop, the Most Reverend Daniel Richards, who also serves on Heathwood Hall's Board of Trustees. I am honored that they are both here to celebrate with us this morning. I also want to thank the Reverends Chris Johnson and Jerry Catherine Sipes for their tireless efforts in planning both the baccalaureate and commencement services for the class of 2023. And George Scouten and Elise Hagstedt for masterfully writing and sharing with us the comprehensive and entertaining class history last night. The warmth of Heathwood's community and the strength of our faith was on full display during our last night together on campus. Later this morning, before conferring diplomas 
to our Heathwood seniors. We'll hear from commencement speaker Stan Wood and our student commencement speaker John Nagy and recognize several adult members of the community for their service to others and their contributions to Heathwood Hall. While we will be recognizing all departing faculty next week during in-service and some later in this ceremony this morning, today also marks the last Heathwood Hall commencement ceremony for three long-serving members of the Heathwood faculty. At this time, I would like to recognize middle school English teacher Helen Rama, early childhood and lower school administrative assistant Nikki Merritt, and associate athletic director and varsity soccer coach Andrew Richardson for their exemplary service to Heathwood, our students and their families. Please join me in celebrating their sustained excellence and important contributions to the Heathwood community. Today's commencement ceremony also marks the completion of Heathwood's 72nd school year, and the seniors seated in front of me will soon be members of the 47th graduating class. In fact, later in this ceremony, I will introduce you to an alum from Heathwood's first graduating class in 1977 that joins us today to assist with the presentation of awards. Heathwood Hall has a rich history and its story has been written by the many educators, students, parents, administrators, and trustees that have called the Heathwood Mansion or the South Beltline Campus home for one year or many decades. I work with an amazing group of teachers, coaches, mentors, and administrators, and they are responsible for the excellence, the thoughtfulness, the caring, and the warmth of our learning community, which it has exuded for decades. I speak for my colleagues when I say that we are grateful for the trust placed in us by the amazing parents and family mothers gathered today in this cathedral. Your partnership and collaboration is appreciated, valued, and embraced. This year, we have three families, the Bowers, the Mullins, and the Quans that are watching their fourth child graduate from Heathwood and we have six families, six families, that celebrated commencement with us last year. Their presence makes it more difficult to say that this is the best graduating class ever. <laughs> with all seriousness, your families and the many families gathered here today have left an indelible mark on the school. And I am grateful for your support, commitment, and sacrifice. There are also members of our community that are no longer with us. During the opening days of your freshman year, we lost Jay Clarkson, and this fall we lost Cindy Scanella, cross country and track coach, upper school administrative assistant, and yearbook advisor extraordinaire after her courageous battle with cancer. As we remember our lost classmate, our lost colleague, and family members that can no longer be with us today, Please join me in a moment of silence. I marvel at the strength of this community and the manner in which it supports those in need during crises, tragedies, and setbacks. Often our school finds strength in each other through individual acts of kindness during communal gatherings in our chapel, in our faith, and here today in the cathedral. This is a special day for the parents and family members of our seniors. <coughs> you are likely experiencing both a euphoric joy and a healthy pride in the amazing accomplishments of your children and excitement in all that lies ahead. However, I imagine at the same time you must be replaying the slideshow in your head that includes thousands of moments of today's graduates growing up. Commencements are unique in creating hope and excitement for the future while also encouraging a longing for the past. Seniors, your time at Heathwood has been marked by joy, discovery, challenge, and fun. You have laughed with your friends, worked with your teachers and coaches, and competed with your teammates. 
There is an energy at schools, and it is connected to our students' constant growth and never-ending aspirations. You have given so much of yourselves to this school. You have transformed our community, and your legacy remains for the enjoyment of families and students to follow. For those seated in the front row, while challenges await, you have so many new opportunities ahead of you, and your time here at Heathwood has prepared you to take advantage of all that awaits. We have done our work, and you have risen to every challenge presented. This past weekend, while I was watching TV on mute while working on some schoolwork, Seabiscuit was on, and I unmuted the TV for a moment for an exchange between Red Pollard, played by Toby McGuire, and George Wolfe, played by Gary Stevens. Red Pollard had been injured, and he is explaining to George Wolfe how to ride Seabiscuit in the match race against War Admiral. After explaining some detailed race strategy, he asked George to close the door, and Red then informs the Wolf that he has to give up the lead on the back stretch because Seabiscuit will fight for the lead. And Red ends the exchange by saying, it's not in his leg, George, it's in his heart. Heathwood's strength lies in its heart and its soul. In fact, the relationships between adults and students is what drew me to the school. And while you all have shared your excellence with this community, I am struck by this class's commitment to serving others, helping others, thinking and praying about others, and giving their heart to this school. The class of 2023 has a tremendous amount of heart, and it has been on display through a passionate pursuit of excellence in the classroom, in the athletic arena, on the stage. It has been evident in the manner in which you have cared for your classmates, your teachers, your advisors, coaches, and it has left a lasting impression on the many Highlanders seated amongst us. I can see you in the student section or in Jake's place. I will remember you during Spirit Week or presenting during Senior Symposium. I will remember Alex Whiteman's cartwheels. My charge to the graduates is to commit to having that impact on the colleges, communities, and workplaces you will join and the families you will grow. Continue to come back and share your heart and soul with this community and your own families. Continue to serve others. Continue to express gratitude. And continue to make a difference in the lives of others. We at Heathwood are grateful for your time with us. And we are grateful for the many gifts you have shared with the school. We appreciate your many talents. And it is with pride, joy, and great hope for our collective futures that we say goodbye to you today and wish you luck in your future endeavors. Thank you.
If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have not faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. The word of the Lord, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. my great honor to introduce this morning's commencement speaker. Today's speaker, Stan Wood, is currently the director of Heathwood Hall's Peak Outdoor Leadership Program, in addition to teaching AP Geography and serving as an advisor, director of campus safety, and senior administrator. Stan Wood was born and raised in Columbia before graduating from Dreer High School in 1978. He earned his BS in physical education from the University of South Carolina and then continued on to graduate from the Wilderness and Outdoor Education programs in 1986 and the National Outdoor Leadership School in 1998. Coach Wood's first teaching career started in the spring of 1983 as a PE teacher at Pierce Terrace Elementary School at Fort Jackson before coming to Heathwood in the fall of 1983 where he has remained for 40 years. Though we know Stan Wood as the director of the PEAK program, his first 15 years at Heathwood revolved around athletics. Between 1983 and 1997, Coach Wood coached softball, football, basketball, and track and field. Of note is that Coach Wood took three boys basketball teams to the state finals, and he collected back-to-back -back Skisa State Championships in 1992 and 1993 while also serving as the athletic director from 1990 to 1997. Stan Wood's Peak Program, founded in 1998, has now been in existence for 25 years, has now grown to serve all students of all ages, and it embodies our belief in experiential learning. Stan Wood has traveled afar and exposed our students to the world. He has summited Mount Rainier, Mount Shasta, and Mount Lassen. He has traveled to Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, to Peru and Machu Picchu. He has scuba dived in Fiji and canoed the boundary waters between Ontario and Minnesota. He has also visited an array of national parks that include Grand Canyon, Death Valley, Redwood, Zion, Bryce, Big Bend, and Everglades. Stan Wood is an impressive educator, thoughtful, meticulous, adventurous, knowledgeable, and caring. His love of movement in the outdoors has clearly suspended the aging process, and he has interests in a broad array of areas. His impact on Heathwood has been transformative, and in the recent and current growth of the PEAK program is a testament to his excellence. 
Coach Wood and his wife, Leslie, have three children, Kristen, Laney, and Kevin. Kevin is graduating class of 2018, and he's also now the grandfather of two grandchildren. Please join me in welcoming today's commencement speaker, Stan Wood. Thank you, Mr. Hinchy. That was a little bit overwhelming, but we'll, we'll move on. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to be able to speak to you today on this day. But first, I want to put any kind of speculation to rest that I'm retiring. I am not. There are too many exciting things going on at Heathwood now, and I want very much to be a part of that for the next 40 years. But I'm one of a very few people in my generation, late baby boomers, to have remained in a job for 40 years. Statistics will tell you that someone of my age changes jobs over 12 times in their lifetime. And although my job responsibilities have changed from time to time, a decades long career in one location is somewhat of an anomaly. I'm incredibly proud to have worked for Heathwood Hall for the entirety of my career and extremely thankful that the school has allowed me to work for them, actually to work for you. The journey that has brought me to this point in my life today, to this lectern right now, is an interesting one, and one that is guided by so many principles that I've come to hold dear as an educator. As Mr. Hinchy said, I came to Heathwood in 1983, fresh out of college, and green as grass. Sarah Roth will attest to that. I came to teach physical education and began a career in coaching. The sports and athletics had long been passions of mine. My first couple of years were difficult, often uncomfortable. I was a relatively quiet and shy individual and trying to get 60 excited and noisy middle school students to follow my lead in a PE class day after day challenged me greatly, as did the coaching aspect to begin with. I was fortunate to have been able to work with some great individuals during my first decade at Heathwood, including Sarah Roth, Lynn Humphrey, Sai Sakachi, Sal Anacito, Missy Lawhorn, Debbie Bray, and Jeff Whalen. <laughs> Bet you didn't know Coach Whalen spent a couple of years at Heathwood in the late 80s before coming back about 10 years later basically to fill my role as I moved into beginning the outdoor education program. But through trial and error, lots of angst and anxiety, missteps and do-over opportunities, and mentorship from some strong individuals, I enjoyed a fairly successful coaching career I served as athletic director for the better part of the 90s, and I was fortunate to have led the department at a time when it grew by leaps and bounds throughout that decade. Over the 15 years between 1983 and 1997, I had developed a reputation as someone who was reliable, showing up to work every day, who took initiative to strengthen programs already in place, and start new ones when a new need arose, and someone who persevered through challenges and earned the trust of student athletes, fellow coaches, and faculty members. I enjoyed my time on the athletics end of campus greatly. But by the late 90s, I had become restless. It seemed that it was time for a change for me, time to explore the possibility of following another passion. When I was young, I loved being outdoors, traveling through the woods and camping. When I was in college, I worked at a summer camp in the mountains for several years, where I was able to do just that. And that job is still one of my favorites to this day. After having been at Heathwood for just a couple of years, I had an opportunity to accompany a group of upper school boys on a winter trip to the Everglades in Florida. We took a train to Miami and drove a van across the state to meet up with instructors from the Outward Bound School for a 100-mile canoe expedition from the southern tip of the state up the west coast. Grayson, your dad might have been one of those boys. On that trip, I learned from one of the instructors about Knowles, the National Outdoor Leadership School. The following year, as a professional development opportunity, Bob Shirley, who was the head of school at the time, allowed me to travel out west to enroll at Knowles for an extended immersive wilderness course in the Wind River Mountains and the Rockies. While I was there, I distinctly remember sitting under a tree on the side of a mountain thinking, I could start a wilderness travel program, maybe through the school, or maybe through a travel agency with which I had a connection at the time, or maybe even on my own. But as soon as I returned to Columbia, I found myself right back on the football field amid two-a-day football practices in August, and 
basketball in the winter, track in the spring, and on and on for 12 or 13 years. That experience in the mountains, though, carrying a heavy backpack, sleeping under a tarp, navigating with map and compass, meeting horse packers to pick up food for the next couple of weeks, it reignited an earlier passion that smoldered within me until 1997, when I became restless and needed to change. When I came to Heathwood in the early 80s, the school had a simple ropes course built with a series of telephone poles and cables, and we used that course a lot in PE classes, even added some elements to it over the years. As the restlessness took over, I realized that I worked at a school with a long-standing, strong commitment to learning beyond the traditional walls of a classroom, from winter room experiences to middle school class trips that began years before I arrived, to the Project Adventure ropes course that was in place before anyone in the Southeast even knew what a ropes course was. So I took the initiative to put together a proposal, and I gave it to Dr. Shirley, laying out an idea for a formal program of outdoor education that took advantage of programs already in place and enhanced them and added opportunities that would allow us to take advantage of our 132-acre campus with access to fields and forests and a pond and easy access to a river and a wetlands area just a stone's throw from the school gate. Dr. Shirley thought about it for several days, then decided to take a risk by allowing me to give it a shot. Maybe even a bigger risk than I took by voluntarily moving out of a well-established role in the school to start a new, very non-traditional program. It may be worth noting that in his recent book, Highlanders, A History of Heathwood Hall Episcopal School from 1951 to 2021, Trey Pop, one of my former players, referred to me at one point as a chipmunk who had strayed too far from the forest. Leaving a well-established career in athletics was obviously a leap of faith, but once the decision was made to make the move, a world of opportunity suddenly opened up. Once the commitment was made to initiate a formal program of outdoor education at Heathwood Hall, we realized that there were rivers to paddle, trails to hike and bike, state parks for camping, all not more than 20-minute bus ride from campus. And there was whitewater for kayaking and mountains with miles of trails for backpacking and camping only a few hours away. We did the local activities with students after school, took a bus ride to adventures further away on weekends, and then began to travel across country and indeed even across the oceans to bigger learning adventures. We created curriculum-based outdoor education classes for students in all divisions, planned and facilitated grade level trips for middle school students and outdoor, adventure-based winter room trips for upper school students. We began to offer programs and events for community groups, from churches to scout troops to secondary schools and colleges, and even corporate executives, providing team building and leadership development opportunities, and in the process, putting our own students to work in leadership roles by having them help facilitate these programs. What began in 1998 as outdoor education at Heathwood Hall evolved into the peak program for leadership, education, and adventure that is built upon the principal elements of leadership development, environmental education, and stewardship, and wilderness exploration. And the word PEAK is an acronym that stands for the pursuit of environmental adventure and knowledge. Remember, this program started in 1998, seven or eight years before you guys were even born. The program that you know today didn't appear overnight. Rather, its creation was an evolutionary process with a long history, a history that involved initiative and passion and risk and perseverance. Scott McCormick is the one responsible for that first ropes course, the poles and cable one. And he may have been the first to put a canoe in the pond. Scott had been at Heathwood several years before I arrived. Many of you parents may remember Mr. McCormick as your eighth grade science teacher. He's the one who initiated the seventh grade chip that is still a favorite today. His passion for the outdoors set the stage. Bill Cherry also had an influence as someone who for many years organized a summer trip, the Western Tour, he called it, where students would load up in a bus and travel across the country for a month, visiting national parks and sleeping under the stars. By the way, Mr. Cherry can also be credited with creating the Winterham program in addition to introducing the school to computer technology. Jim Morris worked for many years as an, as an outward bound instructor before he started outdoor programs at independent schools in Oregon and North Carolina. 
When he arrived at Heathwood, he was tasked with initiating a strong upper school science program in the newly opened Robinson Center for Math and Science. He was a critical factor in helping the PEAK program move from a series of independent events to a program with the vision. Mr. Morris helped build facilities and helped initiate skill development opportunities and outdoor adventure outings. Additionally, there is a long line of PEAK associates who have made contributions to the program during their time in the office across the hall from mine. Dunbar Lyles, Catherine Holloway, Becca Reynolds, Kelly Turbeville, and Elizabeth Grove are all former Heathwood students who have served in that role and shared their passion and initiative with the school. The PEAK program is now poised to take the next step in its evolution. And it's a big step. And it's an exciting step. Thanks to a generous donation from the Darnold W. and Susan F. Boyd Foundation, beginning in the fall of next year, just a few short months from now, the PEAK program will find itself in position to even better serve Heathwood Hall with a brand new building that will house classroom and outdoor education classes in all divisions and provide new ropes course opportunities at Adventure Base Camp that offer challenging and exciting opportunities for personal growth for Heathwood students. In addition to enhancing the students' experience at Heathwood, the Boyd Outdoor Leadership Center will provide building space to serve the greater Midlands community by offering opportunities, not only on weekends, but throughout the week, and indeed throughout the year, for team building and leadership development for businesses, schools, churches, and other civic organizations. Kelly Turbeville is more than ready to make a move into her new role as the director of the PEAK program that serves the Heathwood student community, from outdoor education classes across divisions to after school programs to summer camps. My role shifts to initiating and facilitating opportunities for creative team building and outdoor leadership development, built upon the foundations that have been in place with the Heathwood program for the years, and utilizing the beautiful new Boyd Center at Adventure Base Camp that also houses conference rooms, kitchens, ample storage space, and long needed bathrooms. The contribution by the Boyd Foundation also provides Self-reliance, communication, trust and cooperation, empathy and perseverance. We 
Good morning, and congratulations to the members of the class of 2023. This is a special day for you and for those family members, faculty, and friends who are here to support you. It's my privilege each year at commencement to introduce the student speaker. It's one of my favorite parts of this service, in particular because it's the members of the senior class who select the speaker each year. This year's speaker, John Nagy, was chosen by his classmates out of a talented field of 10 nominees, each of whom had good things to say and each of whom could have done a good job this morning. So John's selection is no small feat. That being said, he is particularly well suited for this role. As someone who has literally grown up at the same school where his mother was once a student, then the middle school head, and now the director of enrollment management, John is a young man whose blood runs plaid. He is well liked because he is friendly, positive, unassuming, and polite. Both in the classroom and on the athletic fields, he has natural talents, but those talents have been honed by hard work. Academically, he's taken our most rigorous course load possible, while athletically, he's earned statewide recognition for both football and lacrosse. In fact, when I was his coach, it was not uncommon for him to thank me and the other coaches at the end of practice each day. Here at Trinity, he has also been a servant leader, most notably as an acolyte. In the fall, John will be studying at Washington and Lee, this year's Boyd Scholarship recipient. But before he gets there, he has the important task of delivering this year's senior commencement address. Please help me in welcoming John Nagy to the pulpit. Thank you, Dr. Skelton. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. These are the last two lines of a poem by Dylan Thomas that I first read in middle school. I didn't know what he meant by light or really any other meaning at the time, but I'm not sure I was really trying to know. During those four transformative years of middle school, we weren't concerned with poetry. We were thinking about our recess football matchups for the day or the early 6 a.m. fire alarm in freezing Washington, D.C. We relished in the honor of holding the five golden rings at the Christmas, Christmas sing-along, and we looked back to Alex Whiteman's infamous line, write that down, scribe, and his kingly performance in our fourth grade play. We were all young, so what did two lines of an old poem have to do with any of that anyway? Fast forward to senior year, I came across that same poem again in a book I'd been reading. And when I revisited those two lines, my mind went back to the first time I saw them. I put the book down. Something about reading it this time resonated with me, but I don't know why. Life at Heathwood has never failed at being eventful for all of us. There has always been something going on. We sang at Habitat Day. We, we got ribbit in the much coveted frog necklace. We played multiplication basketball with Mrs. Bain. We played a game on our fifth grade trip we named Dr. Beasley using Gregory Heaton's knitted beanie with an attached beard that strongly resembled our fifth grade science teacher. Freshman year homecoming where many of us were abducted by inflatable aliens. We, we created Highlander game dynasties. We had student sections at basketball games, Friday night lights, amazing plays and concerts. We had winter home trips like those to France, Spain, Costa Rica and London. I could go on and on about memories like these because we have so many great ones. We have done so much, and a lot of it was really, really good. But to have good times, all of us have had to know and deal with adversity, too. Adversity. Our class had a unique beginning to our time in high school. On a warm spring day in March of 2020, we were all told we might get an extra two weeks off from school. We thought it'd be glorious. We thought wrong. COVID turned out to be the defining moment for our freshman and sophomore years. Classes on Google Meet, being stuck at the house, toilet paper anxiety, everything about that time of our lives was difficult for all of us. We missed being together, but through it all, our, cla our class made the most of our situation. We did the work, 
We stayed connected, and we set ourselves up to have had an amazing finish to upper school. Adversity. Time has also been a cause of adversity for us, uh, but especially for me. Uh, due dates are included here, but for me, uh, it is being on time that is problematic. Uh, I'm late. I'm often late, as many of you well know, and my mom just loves that. In fact, my senior superlative, joined by my friend Franklin Middleton, I was most likely to be late to commencement. I was on time today. <laughs> uh, over these past few years, an extra 10 minutes of sleep has been the difference between being on time for the school day uh, or earning a detention that next Thursday morning. You will learn quickly to be on time, or you will learn to write the 76 definitions of the word set while in detention. I didn't, I didn't think there were that many. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we have learned the importance of being on time which is a skill that will carry us far, especially since it is not always easy to do so. Adversity. The senior exhibition. I was not forced to say this, but the senior exhibition is a good thing. Yes, you heard me. However, it is certainly an ordeal, a year-long research project that somehow still managed to end with late nights before every deadline. Time was against us again. I know Madam Keller did not love my 4 a.m. emails to turn in my work, and those mornings of the deadlines were never fun. Rushing to turn in the hard copy by 8 a.m. on little to no sleep was always stressful, especially with Robert Hodges, enlightened by his own senior exhibition research on the importance of sleep, was reminding us that we were all quickly paving our way to having dementia. <laughs> but we all got through it, coming out the other side better, better able to manage our time, better writers, better thinkers, and better able to handle divert adversity. That brings me to my main point. Adversity has been ever present during our time here at Heathwood, both within our control and outside our control. Adversity is how we learn, and Heathwood has allowed us to learn every time we step on its campus, both in the classroom and outside of it. Every day at Heathwood has been an opportunity to experience something new, allowing us to adapt to a different situation. Whether that adversity was preventable, like procrastinating on a paper for Dr. Plowden, or uncontrollable, like our experience with COVID, Heathwood has given us the tools to deal with adversity so that when we face it next, it is nothing we haven't had to deal with before. Having the ability to deal with adversity is and will always be an invaluable skill to have. It is a proficiency that has been cultivated within all of us since our first days of Heathwood. It does not matter when you first arrived at Heathwood. Every one of us is leaving better than we were when we first arrived. Better at critical thinking, at problem solving, better leaders, and better people. So as I contemplated what I wanted to speak about today, I thought back to that same poem by Dylan Thomas. It stayed with me this whole year, yet I didn't know why until now. After reading it over and over, I finally, what understood, I finally understood what had been vexing me for so long, Thomas's meaning of light. The light is the good we have all yet to create. It is kindness, humility, and generosity. It is respect, integrity, and honor. It is something to chase, to strive to bring forward. We will have to work for it, and it will not be easy, but it shouldn't be. Coach Lewis once told all of us on the football field, actually often told us, if it was easy, everybody would do it. It was a mantra for us all, reminding us who we were and what we needed to do. We must all welcome that adversity, confident in who we are, that we can deal with it and make the world that much brighter. Let's all be like Dylan Thomas. Chase that light, fight for it, use everything you have to reach it, whatever that light may be. Light is a fleeting thing, so why not achieve it now? Face the adversity of situations, relish the time you have, use time wisely, be on time. Seek knowledge and love to learn. Know that we have been taught how to do so during our time here at Heathwood. Create the good even when it may not be easy. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you and congratulations.
guess you're going to hear me one way or the other. This time, I am honored to recognize the adult recipients of our named awards. The awards recognize altruism, transformative impact on the community, and selfless service to the school, hallmarks of Heathwood Hall. The Ann Thornhill Weston Alumni Award is named in honor of Ann Weston, longtime science teacher, an upper school head, and assistant headmaster who served Heathwood for 27 years from 1978 to 2015, and given to a Heathwood Hall graduate who has followed in the footsteps of Ann Weston and distinguished themselves in the area of community service and shared Ann's belief in the dignity of all people and in the mission of Episcopal schools to educate and serve with faith, hope, and love. Today's recipient has spent a lifetime serving the people in Columbia community and giving back to Heathwood Hall. He was born in Columbia, and in the four Ks, he entered the Heathwood Hall mansion in the Heathwood neighborhood. That was in 1972, and after moving to the South Beltline campus in 1974, he enrolled in the first grade. He graduated from Heathwood Hall in 1986. He then matriculated to the University of Georgia, where he earned a degree in business administration. After working for a large commercial construction company, he opened his own construction company in 2004. And during his professional life, he has been committed to both volunteer work, both at Heathwood Hall and community organizations across Columbia. He served as the president of Columbia Green, a group committed to improving and protecting the national beauty of Greater Columbia. And he is the current board chair of the Cooperative Ministry. He also ushers and volunteers at Shandon Baptist Church. He's been particularly generous with his time and expertise on our campus. And he and his company have helped Heathwood with numerous projects over the years. The Tourville Strength and Conditioning Center, the Maker Space, the Tennis Court Pavilion, and the renovations in the Nord and the Robinson Center, and help planning future projects such as the playgrounds, the indoor and outdoor chapels, art renovations in the campus center, and campus infrastructure. He has been a sounding board, a source of wisdom, and a helpful collaborator in the, transformative, in the transformation of our campus. Married to Missy, and father to Sarah, class of 2016, and Davis, class of 2019, Please join me in recognizing this year's recipient of the Ann Thornhill Weston Award and member of the class of 1986, Davis Buchanan. The Averitt Award is named in honor of Gail and Peg Averitt, former Heathwood parents, grandparents, volunteer leaders, and friends whose exceptional generosity and leadership in giving have been instrumental in the school's growth and commitment to excellence. I'll take that in a second. The award is given to recognize a member of the Heathwood community whose philanthropic support has had significant impact on the Heathwood Hall community. Since 2010, the Darnell W. and Susan F. Boyd Foundation has created, supported, implemented, and promoted outdoor recreational opportunities and facilities, appreciation of wildlife, the beautification of urban areas, the strengthening of educational programs, and the enhancement in the quality of life for Midlands restaurant, uh, residents. Their generous and forward-thinking foundation has made possible numerous projects that include the renovation of the Aquarium and Reptile Center at the Riverbank Zoo, the renovation and restoration of the Hampton Preston Mansion, Garden, Greenhouse, and Gatehouse, the Boyd Buildings at Sandhills, the Boyd Dining Commons at Camp Woody, the Boyd Plaza adjacent to the Art Museum. Their philanthropic generosity is transforming and strengthening Columbia and the Midlands. Heathwood is grateful for the partnership with the Boyd Foundation to grow the peak program by expanding Adventure Base Camp, by enhancing existing ropes courses, and building the Boyd Foundation Peak Center. Peak, founded in 1998 by our commencement speaker, is Heathwood's signature leadership program. 
and present students with a whole host of outdoor opportunities. The generosity of the Boyd Foundation will make possible a transformative expansion of the PEAK program and enable it to serve both the people of the Midlands and the Heathwood Hall community. We are honored to present the Averitt Awards to Susan F. Boyd and Ford Bailey. Earl H. Devaney was headmaster of Heathwood Hall Episcopal School from 1972 until his death in 1977. Many of you have seen his name on the pillars at the front gate. The Earl H. Devaney Award is given by Heathwood Hall Episcopal School each year to a member of the Heathwood Hall community who has been significant in the development of the school and who reflects the values and principles that the school has founded. Today we have a special guest. Joining us today in the cathedral is Scott Devaney, the youngest son of former headmaster Earl Devaney and a former member of the Heathwood Hall Board of Trustees. Scott is a graduate of Heathwood Hall's first school graduating class in 1977. He earned a bachelor's degree in political science in 1981 from the University of the South of Sewanee. We are grateful that Scott has traveled from Annapolis where he lives with his wife Louise. Following my introduction of the award recipient, Scott will join me at the steps of the altar to assist with the presentation of the Devaney Award. As an upper school science teacher for 24 years, Tim McKnight has brought physics, AP physics, and astronomy to life at South Beltline. In addition to physics content in the classroom, his students have been treated to a different necktie every day of the year which he documents on Facebook on a daily basis. The ties connect to topics he is covering or activities in the life of the school. Born in South Africa to missionary parents, Tim brings that same level of care and desire to no students here at Heathwood. Mr. McKnight encourages students to be problem solvers with hands-on activities, from building miniature catapults to creating hovercrafts with a leaf blower and a miniature trampoline. In addition to classroom efforts, Tim is a gifted musician and a talented photographer. Mr. McKnight has been particularly supportive of the International Student Club, Volleyball, and Coffee House. It would not be inconceivable to find Tim McKnight taking pictures at an International Student Dinner Celebration and providing advanced PR and publicity for a volleyball game while also keeping score and crunching stats for the team he would still somehow find time to play guitar at the upper school coffee house and caption action photographs at the Highlander games. Thoughtful, hardworking, energetic, curious, and selfless, Tim McKnight has served Heathwood, its students and his colleagues, admirably and honorably. During his time at Heathwood, he has demonstrated a love of learning and a pursuit of knowledge. His contributions to the fabric of the school have been many. Please join me in recognizing the first recipient of the Devaney Award, Tim McKnight. Our second recipient is not able to join us today, and you'll forgive me if I do talk to the camera a little bit, because she's watching from home. There is not a student or parent for the last 40 years 
that has not heard that distinct southern voice answer the phone, middle school, Bonnie Bruner. <laughs> Bonnie Bruner has been steadfast in her work to improve the school. She is dedicated to the hall. While she has spent time in the admissions office when she first arrived at Heathwood, she has dedicated a majority of her career to work with adolescents. Always with a turvis tumbler of tea on her desk, Bonnie was the first to greet students and parents, deliver messages in her, in her beautiful cursive, collect lost and found items in Bonnie's boutique, bubble in ERB scores sheets, guide the leadership council, attend the dances, plan the DC trip, oversee the announcements, and make sure turkey trot and awards day were planned and organized. Bonnie has so much institutional knowledge and remembers all of the students that have passed through the halls of the middle school. She has not only managed support for various administrators, Bonnie would also be the best in coordinating trips, schedules, new family orientations, and seeking to know each student. She was also a parent of three Heathwood Hall graduates, Thomas, class of 1989, John Downs, class of 1994, and Michael, class of 1995. One of Bonnie's gifts is celebrating milestones, and she was genuinely proud and excited for students and their accomplishments. Bonnie is one of Heathwood's resident historians, and she quietly but lovingly shares these treasures. She invested valuable time and genuine care for all of us. Bonnie Bruner is a great example of what we want adults to be like on our campus. She is a woman with a strong faith who is always rooting for the kids and believes that all students will blossom and develop and grow into amazing people. The middle school will never be the same and the entire school is, Sunday, is sending love and gratitude. Because Bonnie is not here and because she is watching this service from home as her chemo treatments have been draining, I ask that we send her all our energy so that she can hear us at home. Please join me in recognizing 40 years of service, the second recipient of the Devaney Award, Bonnie Bruner. Board Chair Freeman Belser to assist with the presentation of diplomas and Bibles. Please kindly hold your applause until all graduates have received their diplomas. Will the class of 2023 please come forward? William Pierce Avery. Peter Michael Balthaser, Jr. John Stewart Barr. Julie Virginia Bowers. Gregory Anthony Brown II. Elizabeth Gregory Trot Burns.
Fred Hayward Campbell III. Robert Bryce Campbell. Madison Grace Clary. Sophia Sloan Connor. Gabriel Galloway Cooper. Elliot Ladare Cox. Ashley Suzanne Creek. Gabrielle Chappelle David. Lindsay Louise Davis. Celia McMahon Deese. Elizabeth Ann Draffen. Grayson Danielle Elliott. Jackson Anderson Eng. Lauren Elizabeth Free. Emily Grace Frick. William Jacobs Frick. Jonathan David Gardner II. Hermella Quinn Guyswhite. Maximus David Haygood. Owen Jennings Hart. Gregory Whalen Heaton. Edward Webb Hodges. Robert Hayne Hodges the Fourth.
Madeline Kendall Hurst. Joshua Walker Jackson. Mark McCutcheon James Jr. Nicholas Adam Johnson. Jasmine Nicole Jones. David Neil Kennard. Francis Elizabeth Kitchens. William Rush Kuhn. Madeline Grace Kuhns. Peyton Ann Lawbacker. Kiana Michelle Lee. Dylan Joshua Lassane. Austin Reed Lister. Jonas Kyle Lindsay. Eugenia Weston Manning. Franklin Elliot Middleton. Ann Neely Miller. Isabel Ponsony Morehouse. Abigail Wade Mullins. Alexander Chen Myrick. John Ryan Nagy.
Emily Catherine Noble. Abigail Elaine Osborne. Lillian Grace Paget. Mayan Rakesh Patel. Liam Thomas Kwan. <coughs> Caleb Charles Runyon. Weston Baker Jude Searfoss. Zane Ulaziz Shah. Mia Jane Singerling. Ethan Paul Smith. Lola Louise Smith. Taylor Hazan Smith. Abigail Brescia Suber. Ellie Caroline Tanner. Cameron Riley Truesdale. Emile James Vadreen. Alexander Scott Whiteman. <laughs> Catherine Adair Wood. John Jang Zong. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2023.
pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Let us give thanks to God for all God's gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for all the beauty and wonder of creation in earth, sky, and sea. We thank you, Lord. For those in positions of public trust who serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We thank you, Lord. For schools, colleges, and universities, in all lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom, and especially for Heathwood Hall Episcopal School. Amen. For the Heath and Manning families, and for all stewards of this community, Amen. for our founding bishop, John James Gravitt, and for the faithful procession of bishops, priests, and lay ministers who have served our community. For all who have served as trustees and for the leadership and vision of all the heads of school, especially Susan Gibbs Robinson, our founding head of school, and Chris Hinchy, our current head of school. For all who respond to the call to teach, for parents and friends who sustain our mission, and for students who grow in wisdom and grace, for minds to think, for hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. Loving and compassionate God, on this commencement day, we give, thank we give you thanks for the Heathwood Hall Episcopal School Class of 2023. May they ever know your presence and grace. To God, we praise and Please bow your head in prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith and where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, and to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to return our life. Amen. Please be seated. Graduates, oftentimes in services like this, it seems like there's a lot to talk about, which is not you, so I'm going to speak directly to you. Some well-earned wisdom. In the future, you will regret your haircut. <laughs> Maybe not this haircut, but you will regret your haircut. If you never do, you will marry someone who always does. May they have the grace to tell you. <laughs> Jesus told a parable about a wedding. And in the Middle East, they still do this in some places, but the, the groom would be getting ready in one town and the bride in another. And the, the, groom, the groomsmen would leave from the bride's house and they would go out in a parade. They would get the groom 
they would pick up the groom, they would put him on one donkey, and they'd bring him through town to the bride's house, where they would pick up the bride, and then they would travel back through town, and waiting for the bride and the groom was a big part of the festivities. The job of the virgins, the young women of the family, was to keep their lamps lit in case it got dark. And the lamps were, as you've probably seen, Aladdin's lamp, the small little brass lamp. They usually weren't brass, they were clay. And they really had four parts. The lamp, the wick, and the oil. The fourth part being the light. The job was just to keep the oil filled into the lamp so the lamp would keep burning through the night. And there were ten wise and ten foolish virgins. I'll let your pastor finish the story. What I'm going to tell you is that you have been created to be a lamp. You have been created to be a lamp, to bring the light of Christ into the world in places no one else will ever reach. You have been created to be a lamp. And so I want to give you some advice. The lamp of learning, the lamp of information burns quick. It's necessary, but it burns quick. Don't just seek to know things. Seek to be wise. Actually think. It isn't popular, but it is powerful. Not everybody does it. Trim your wick. A wick has to be a certain length in order to actually give good light can be too long or it overburns and burns everything out and doesn't work very well. It's too short. The flame never quite catches. You have to constantly trim the wick. Don't let the people around you convince you that you're the only light there is. Trim your wick. Stay humble. Tend your oil. The light that you bear right now, you are burning the oil other people have given you. You won't burn your own oil for a while. Not until you really learn to think. Until you really have earned actually the deeps of side inside you by thinking, by <coughs> suffering, and by persevering. You are burning other people's oil. So thank them profusely. And remember that all oil essentially comes from nuts that have been through a lot of pressure. <laughs> so be kind to your parents. They've been through a lot. <laughs> and stay awake, for you don't know when the Messiah will come. God has a funny way of showing up in your life when you least expect it. Opportunities come in the middle of the night. Stay awake. Don't get bored and distracted. Don't let your phone or your best friend's worst idea convince you that this is the moment to become stupid. <laughs> Stupidity, unlike thinking, is popular. Stupidity is not the lack of knowledge. It is the refusal to think. But most importantly, I would tell you, from the place where I stand, being a light is important. It's vital. You may save lives. But to be great, to be great, become a lighter of other people's lights. Become a lighter of other people's lights. Build other people up. Make other people strong. Let other people look smarter than you, even and maybe especially when you're the smartest person in the room. Becoming great means realizing that the cumulative amount of light comes from the number of candles burning, not the singular light in the room. Make other people great by lighting their light and protecting their flame when the world comes close to knocking it out.
you will see people around you who are barely alive, who barely have any spark left. You can protect them. You can shelter them. You can let their light grow brighter. This is the greatness of human beings carrying the light of God. Not merely to light the darkness, but to end darkness by lighting other flames. And the world needs you. The world needs you. All of us up here in robes, with families and friends who've gathered, you will speak at times we will not be present. You will be kind to those we will never meet. You will bear the light in places we will never go. Do your part in the changing of the world. Bear the light of God. In the end, there really is only one light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I don't think Jesus meant Jesus of Nazareth on this day, on a Tuesday, I'm all there is. The light of goodness, the light of God shining in the world is not hard to figure out. No matter what anyone tells you, you know what is good. You have seen the light. You have seen it in the people around you. You've seen it in your teachers and administrators. You've seen it in parents, grandparents, and occasionally, you've even seen it in each other. Don't get confused. There is only one light. Yours is a fragment, a little bit of the light of God given to you to tend. Let it shine. If I were a bolder man and a better singer, I'd sing this little light of mine and you'd all be impressed. <laughs> but that is not my job. So please stand. Pierce, Michael, John, Virginia, Gregory, Elizabeth, Tripp, Bryce, Maddie, Sophia, Gabe, Elliot, Ashley, Gabby, Lindsay, Celia, Ellie, Grayson, Jackson, Lauren, Emily, Will, JD, Mela, Max, Owen, Gregory, Webb, Robert, Madeline, Josh, Mac, Nick, Jasmine, Neil, Eliza, Will, Madeline, Peyton, Kiana, Dylan, Reed, Jonas, Weston, Franklin, Annie, Isabel, Abby, Alex, John, Katie, Abigail, Lillian, Mian, Liam, Caleb, Weston, 
Zane, Mia, Ethan, Lola, Taylor, Abby, Ellie, Cameron, Emil, Alex, Adair, John. As your classes and grading are now complete, may you strive toward excellence in all that you do. As the speeches conclude, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace to the world. As the fanfares cease, may you sing of joy, even in the dark and the lonely places. As the applause ends and quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As you graduate today, may your achievements grow and cause growth in your communities. And may we all know of the overwhelming blessing of the one who created all things. And the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.